Good morning. Let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, to you belongs all praise, glory, and honor. Help us now to look into your wondrous word and to understand it. We ask this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We left off here last week, uh, Matthew 8, verse 10. And he, it says, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that follow, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. This is concerning the touch. Remember the touch? He touched the leper. And the next thing, he's dealing with a centurion. And the centurion says, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but just speak the word and thy, my servant shall be healed. And the Lord says, wow, that's what I should have found in Israel. And he didn't find it because Israel had all the evidence. And here's the centurion, he says, you don't even have to touch me, I'll, I'll just believe it. And that's what the Lord wants. Uh, he, he wants us to, believe, to live by faith, as Brother Clark mentioned last week, uh, it's by faith. That's what he wants. Four times in the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abram, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into utter darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, so look at this. Many shall come. They shall come to grace. Because Jesus is full of grace. And what is grace? Unmerited. Unmerited favor. God's riches at Christ's expense. We get it all by, through Jesus. If it hadn't been for Jesus, we'd all be doomed to hell for eternity. But through Jesus, we have been, uh, through God's through Jesus' expense, we are now getting God's riches. So, uh, but look at this. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, did they ever see Jesus? No, it was long before their time. So they saw Jesus by faith. This is what it's telling us. They didn't see Jesus, it was all by faith. It was all, just like we don't see Jesus, it's by faith. We believe that 2,000 years ago, he died on the cross. So it's by faith. So these guys, the fathers of the Jewish nation, they, many shall come to grace just like these people did. They, Abraham, the Bible says he believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He believed. And that's what God wants from us, believe. And we saw why it's very important to just read the Bible and believe it. Because if you rely on miracles and signs and wonders, you could be deceived. Because the Bible says it's coming. There's signs and wonders. The great deception is coming. If you rely on, like Thomas, I don't believe it until I see it. And Jesus says, Thomas, go ahead, handle me. Go ahead, touch me. And then he told Thomas, blessed are they who have not seen and yet believed. And he was rebuking Thomas. He says, you won't believe it until you see it. But it's better to believe it even if you haven't seen it you know so he's saying that right off the start he's saying this and that's what that means Abraham Isaac and Jacob they didn't see it and yet they believed they're the fathers but the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness they had all the evidence and now that can happen to Baptists too because they come to a church like this where brother best brother best teaches pure Bible. I mean, he teaches the Bible. And that's why I love we sex. I mean, because you're getting steak, you know? You're not getting, you're not getting uh, buns and lettuce and tomato and that's it. You're getting the meat. Um, so it can, it can be dangerous because you come here and you listen to that and then you dis disregard it. You know? Uh, so God says it's a dangerous thing. So, and Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed the same hour. 
So we know that the servant was never touched. He never was touched because Jesus didn't go. He says, go ahead, go. Okay. And the Bible tells us he was healed. That's the beauty of this. And which means without the physical touch, which that, that puts an emphasis on prayer, folks. You know, that was when we pray, we don't know how powerful this thing is. Because if you pray believing, you can pray for your aunt, your uncle, your cousin, whatever. You're bringing them to Jesus without the touch, but it's a, it's a, a spiritual touch. So now we go on to the, now we move on to the other miracle. We're still in the grace department. Um, and when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. Notice how that story is just so concise, so like it's just a passing thing. He came into the Peter's house, uh, and there, and there uh, Peter's uh, mother-in-law was sick, and he touched her, and boom, the fever left her. That's it. But notice the Peter's house refers to Israel. He's back in Israel. He's back in Israel, and these are the people that require a sign. They need to see it. And so what does Jesus do? He touched her, because that's what they expected. Well, he's back now to the touch. Uh, unlike the centurion, the centurion, he says, you, you don't have to touch. I'll believe it, because I know, I, I understand authority. It's amazing, folks, how the Bible is written. I mean, you go from one step to the next to the next. It's a continuity. And so the, all the Bible, nobody could have written the Bible like this except God. It's just too heavy, folks. The Bible is just too heavy. No man can write like this. It's all. So and the, he touched her, and, and the fever left her. So he, look at this. These three, these three, you have the leper. We saw the leper at, at, at the bottom. And, and, and then we have the centurion. And now we have this woman. Now, these three miracles in a row, and we know that all these, in Israel you had the Ark of the Covenant, and that's a picture, that box, that remember I, I brought it in here and we saw it, it's a picture of Jesus. That box is the mercy seat. That mercy seat, all these three people, the leper, the centurion, and the woman, they're excluded from ever coming into that mercy, they're excluded. No leper could ever come to the temple. And no, no Gentile, dogs, they could never, they were excluded from the promises of God. And so were women. Women couldn't come into the temple. There's no woman that could ever come. There's no way. They're all excluded. But, see, they're barred from ever, of the mercy seat. But yet, under grace, <clears throat> They're, all these people got touched. Uh, in various degrees of faith, they all got touched. Wow. This is something new. It's totally new. The law, the Jewish law was really hard. And this is why I, I continue to say, you, you should, many people, and years ago when I went to visit New Tribes Missions, they told, they told me that they would go out into the field. They were teaching the New Testament. To, to, to the natives. But then they would find out that they would leave the field to come home on furlough and the, and the natives would go back to their old ways of uh, um, drinking and carousing, whatever. Because the Bible has is, is got two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament teaches you the fear of the Lord, it teaches you the fear of God. The New Testament teaches you the love of God. There are two sides and you gotta have them both. Because if you just teach love, ah, God is good, he, he will, he'll forgive me. You don't understand that God is holy too, and he will chastise you. And so here you have, um, now you have, they came in various, various uh, d degrees of faith, but they all were touched under the grace, okay? So now look at this. Here's a layout, I got this image off of the internet. The Sermon on the Mount, that's how far it is, about 1.8 miles away from Capernaum. So he preached the Sermon on the Mount. We dealt with that for, three, for all these weeks. 
uh, three chapters, and then he moved over to Capernaum. That's where Peter used to live, and that'll become the the home city of Jesus. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast them, he cast out spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took on our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. So we're back to that's that's a Jewish town. And notice how it says they brought unto him. And I thought, what, why didn't they do what the centurion did? You know, just, Lord, my mom needs your touch. What's your mom's name? Olivia. Okay, good. Go home, she's fine. By faith. But no, they brought him. Because he's back into the Jewish, we, we, we were just told, they, they require a sign, the Jews require a sign. So they brought him, and look how he healed him with his word. His word doesn't have limitations. His word can heal right here in the same room or across the city or in Africa. The word can travel. His word is that powerful. And that's the centurion, he understood authority. He says, I have one, I, when I tell one, I go do it, and he goes and when, and to another, do this, and he does it. He understood authority, how, how it travels. All you do, and that's how the military works. A command can go across like this. The command, the officer just tells you to do it. And that travels down the, the, the ranks. So here you have, by his word, it was being done. And himself took on our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now, I don't quite understand this, except there's a passage there where they told him once, they said, because he said, remember when Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am? And we know he was only 30 at this time. And yet, when they said, you're not even 50 yet, that, to me, that means that he looked worn. He looked older than his age. And what caused that? I think what caused that was their infirmities he bore and the sicknesses he was taking upon his body. He had a perfect body. His DNA was without disease. That means he had a perfect body. But yet, it, it, when he was taking our infirmities and our sicknesses, I believe that was, that was causing a wear in his body. And that's just me. Okay. Now look at this, I showed you that little, little thing that just, I went there in 2016 and I took this picture, okay? That picture I'm gonna show you. And I, I stood in that little road right there, right here. Uh, we parked right here, me and three other guys, uh, two pastors and a driver. And so the driver was, uh, he does travels all over the world, so he, he's really good for driving. And I, because some of the streets there are really narrow and people drive like, <coughs> fast and so he, he it was I'm glad I would not drive you know with anyway he he parked here and and the two two pastors went out here to to do a commentary they had a camera and they wanted to do a commentary on the sea and so the other one I lost him here somewhere in this building so I took a walk this little country you know what's so amazing I mean I'm in awe at Capernaum I go there and I says Jesus walked here the master of the universe, the king of kings, the glory of, I mean, he walked here. I'm walking, that little pebble, did he step on that little pebble? <laughs> you know, you're walking, I'm in awe. And there's hardly anybody there. There's no McDonald's or Dairy Queens or nothing, Wendy's or nothing there. It's desolate. I mean, it's, this is 2016 and there's nobody there. I'm walking on by myself and, uh, and I stopped there and I took this picture. And that's across the Sea of Galilee to the other side, you know. And I couldn't help but just stand there and love it by myself, just thinking, you know. And, and, and then I took this other picture there on the beach. And notice, this is, look at all the rocks. And I think those rocks are seats. They're seats. Uh, because one day he told Peter, put the boat out a little bit and let me sit on there and preach to the people. So I superimposed that boat on there. And then he preached from there. He preached to the people because they were all wanted to touch him. Remember that? It, it wasn't so much that they wanted to listen to him, they wanted to touch him because he had power. And that's why it says, 
he, that's why he told the, the leper, don't tell anybody, go show yourself to the priest. But instead of doing that, the leper went and published it all over the place. And so if you do that, people just flock to him. They came from all over the place. We're talking thousands of people. I mean, lots of people. They just wanted to touch him. And so he says, get me out there. And so Peter did put him out. Of, now, it says this here. And when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. Now, five miles, that's about uh, to the other side, to Bethsaida or somewhere around there. But I, I believe, yeah, he did. He took the 11 mile route. Because the other side, I'm gonna show you, that's the Gatherings. He's gonna visit the, the man that's possessed. Yes, ma'am. When you were there, is that like government land, park land or something that nobody's living on it? Or is it just really bad transportation to get up there? That's a good question. I don't know. I just, just that, you'd be, I mean, we protect everything about the Alamo. The Alamo's only 300 years old or whatever. No, not even that. Yeah, but there, I mean, watch, there's a little um, Byzantine or a Greek Orthodox little church there. It's, it's like a little museum, and that's about the only thing that's there. But th nobody, a, a few people are selling trinkets and crosses and little fish and things, you know. But other than that, you know, and you find that, I think the Lord designed it by it. It's such a dangerous place that people just don't set up shop there. Why is it dangerous? Well, I mean, all the commotion, the Israel, and, and I mean, that's close to the Golan Heights. Oh, it is? Oh, I mean, the, see, the Golan Heights is here. This is the Golan Heights. Oh. Okay. And, and then Lebanon is going to be out here. I stayed at a kibbutz right about here somewhere. And when I woke up in the morning, CNN was saying, there was, this was in 98, there were rockets being shot from. Lebanon into that area oh, okay. and I woke up and says oh good grief I forgot this is not a a Capulco you know but I woke up and I got really I, I, I woke up and I thought I got kind of fearful I says this is dangerous and so I walk outside and there's two little boys in the cutouts waiting for a bus to pick them up for school and they were playing basketball in the sunlight with a volleyball. And I thought, they're not worried. Why should I be worried? Okay, let's do this. And then from there on, I just went about my business. But I think that's one of the things. Although Tiberius, which is here, Tiberius is over here someplace. That's hustling and bustling, because I that's quite a, I was there in, like two years ago, and that, it's changed quite a bit. It's, I mean, they're putting skyscrapers and things in. So it's growing, but still re this remains the same. So that's a good question. Maybe Israel knows. Israel, even though they're unbelievers, they know they've got, they got a good thing going because Christians like this pour into that country and they bring a lot of money because they want to spend. It's like a, Dis to me, Israel is Disney World. You know, everywhere you go, there's something there, that, and there's ruins, you know, um, that you, if you need to know the Bible before you go there, because otherwise you'll see, you don't know wh where you're at. I mean, you could be standing right there where Gideon fought the uh, Midianites and you don't have a clue. But I mean, if you know that, this is, wow, this is where that battle took place, or, and so on. That's, but I think that could be, I never heard, it could be also that the Israel is protecting those areas. Okay, so he says, let's go to the other side. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus says unto him, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So it's like he's telling us, you're gonna count, the, you gotta count the cost. And the Christian life is easy but the Christian life is hard at the same time um, because he's gonna help you, but at the same time, God says, you know, he never promises a rose garden. He says, if you, if you live godly, you will be persecuted. And he needs you to know that. 
The son of man, he says, I'm not going to promise you an easy life. And then another one says, another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. And Jesus says, then, he says unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Don't procrastinate, he says. Because he, he was saying, look, my dad is getting up in age, so let me take care of him. He's probably not dead. I mean, he was probably in his 50s. He says, you know, I got to tend the farm. or Once he dies, I'll follow you. And Jesus says, no, follow me now. And so I think many people will do this. They don't follow the Lord because they got, they got other business to tend to. You're going to miss out on blessings. Because I was just talking with Leah uh, Denson, and I'm saying a lot of people, I says, because Brother Denson just stepped into eternity. This is all good. His time clock just <laughs> stopped. He just left. I says, but he hasn't died. He just left onto the other side. I says, and when we, I mean, that's, that's a fantastic thing. That's why funerals are so good. Because to us Christians, we go and that reminds us, your day is coming in, yeah. in which you'll step over. So for, for now, you want to gather as much as possible before that time stops. And you got enough for the other side. Okay, so follow me. Now look what happens here, folks. Amazing. And when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. Some of them did. Now, he, hasn't, he doesn't have them all right now yet. He's starting, he's been gathering. He probably has four at least. James and John and Peter and Andrew. He doesn't have a whole lot of disciples yet, but he's, he's and the, some of them are not going, not following him. We just saw that. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves but he was asleep. And that to me, folks, he was tired. He really had a, God steps into space and time and he had a body just like ours, a real body. He was tired. And I think that was, he healing all those people, he was taking all that upon his body. And I think that's the reason why he was tired. He was worn out. I mean, all day long, preaching and teaching and touching and all. And, and he was taking that up on his body and it was just wearing him out. And so he falls asleep. And it's just, his disciples followed him. Now the ones that follow them, they're going about to see, they're going to have their minds blown. <laughs> Literally. And I'm thinking, how many, how many of us don't follow the Lord and we miss out on the blessings? We miss out on the miracles. You don't see, you won't, you'll never see them. Because you, you decide you're going to, you got your life to do. So look what happens. There arose a great storm. Now, why is it say? Why couldn't it just say there arose a storm, a tempest? It tells us a great. That means mega, big, exceedingly, and now it scares them. And you would say, why would it scare these guys? These guys, Peter, James, John, Andrew, these guys were expert fishermen. A little storm's not going to scare them in that sea, the Sea of Galilee. But yet, they were fearful. Now, look at this, folks. A layout of this area. <clears throat> the Sea of Galilee is 700 feet below sea level. The Dead Sea is 1,300 feet below sea level. Uh, the valley is 200 feet above sea level. The Golan Heights is 2,800 feet above sea level. And the Hermon, Mount Hermon, which is seven to 9,000 feet above sea level, that's where the snow melts and creates the, the Jordan River. And that's what creates the, the water that comes into the Sea of Galilee and then, and then goes on to uh, the Dead Sea. Look at the variation in, in height from nine to uh, 70,000 feet to 700 feet below. That's about 10,000 feet in different uh, altitude, which means you're going to have the cold winds come from up there, and they're going to meet the warm winds from the storm, and that's perfect for storms. Yeah. And that's why you're going to have storms there at the Sea of Galilee all the time. And the disciples were used to this. Storms, bring them. Not this one, folks. This one's different. So, you know, you have, you're going to have storms, but this one, the Bible says, was a mega storm. So it's an unusual storm. This storm, and we know who runs the show right now. 
the prince of the power of the air. And his business is to scare the daylights out of you. And he has, the Bible tells us he has many of us in bondage because we're, far, we're, far, we're afraid to die. He th- he's, he's, the one, he's been given the power of death, the Bible says. So he can scare us with that, with that. He can scare us with that. I'll kill you. Oh, please don't. What's the worst that can happen to you? You go to heaven. Ta-da! You know, bring it. Uh, not to say that I'm not, folks. I, so am I. Because, I mean, when, when I had a triple bypass, I thought, Lord, I know you can make it go away. I know you can just, you know, it's easy for you. Do, do it, Lord. I mean, you don't have to test me. I'm your servant. I don't have to be tried, you know. And when they're taking me into the OR, and I'm seeing the lights go by on the hallway, and I'm thinking, I guess you're not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and they take me through the OR, and the doors open. <laughs> and I got people all around me, and they're talking, having conversations. I says, hello. <laughs> this is real? It's going to happen? It's literally... Lord, you're not coming through. What happened? And then the guy, you know, he, they already stick me, so now all they got to do is inject the, the... I'm thinking, and they move me over to the table, and I'm says, it's going to happen. I can't believe it, Lord. It's going to happen. I says, okay. I could wake up in heaven. I guess that's, that's good. And the guy says, come backwards from 100. And I count it to 97, and I'm gone. Boom. <laughs> and the next thing you know, I wake up and I'm sitting up. I says, are they going to do it? <laughs> oh, good night. They did it. Oh, good night. <laughs> I got all these things and I tell the nurse, can you take this thing out of my mouth? He says, oh, Mr. Sawyer, you're awake. I says, yeah, take it out. He says, oh, I can't do that. The doctor's going to have to do it. Let me go. And when she walked out of the dark room, it was like I heard a voice says, so what's the big deal, huh? I thought, wow, Lord. I didn't feel a thing. He says, no, you got to trust me. That's amazing, folks. I will never be the same again, you know? Because you, you go through that valley, and, and, and if, you know, if you don't wake up, I mean, you do wake up on the other side. But oh, on this side, it's like, you'll never be the same again. Never. So here you have this. Now look what happens, folks. And, the, and his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And in another, and Mark, he says, don't you care? We're dying. Don't you care? And he was sound asleep. The Lord was sound asleep. And he's, if you have Jesus with you, you should have peace. And, but not them. They were, I mean, that's us. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subjects to bondage. There's that verse, folks. That's what it tells us. The devil can do that to us. He can hold us in bondage because uh, we're, we're fearful. And look what he does. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? O ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Wow. Now, this is amazing, folks. This is what everybody, all the other guys that didn't go on the boat, they missed out on this. Because the Lord just blew their mind. Look what it does. Look what it says. He rebuked the winds, and he's, I can show you places where it sounds like in the other gospel in Mark, it sounds like he's talking to a person. Not so much here, but the way he's talking to the winds is like he's talking to a person. Of course he's talking to a person. He's talking to the devil. The, the, the prince of the power of the air says, cut it out. Quiet. And look at this. And there was a great calm. Notice that word great again. Look at this. But the men marveled, saying, what manner of man is this? Yikes, how do he do that? The winds and the sea obey him. Now, in, the, in Mark, it says this. Look at this. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? 
One minute they're afraid of the storm, and the other minute they're more fearful of him. Isn't that amazing? This is, whoa, how do you do that? You know, you got this, and I've seen storms out at sea, being a Navy guy, I've seen storms, folks. I mean, I've really seen storms out in the, Atlantic, in the Pacific. They're rough. 15 foot waves is nothing. I mean, <sighs> angry waves. And you just want to don't let go of the metal wherever you're at. And that's what they saw. And now all of a sudden they go, <sighs> and that says they were exceedingly fearful. They were fearful of him. I mean, they, had, they were frightened of what they just saw. And, and it shows them that he's in control. In Mark, because he claimed to be, uh, we're told way back in Numbers, in Numbers uh, 24 and 19, we're told that one was coming who was gonna have dominion. Dominion was given to Adam, he lost it. But this one that's come, he's got dominion over everything. This is the master. This, Jesus is, is God. I mean, he had dominion over everything. And he just told him. And now he's going to give him a picture. Of, let's go on. Let's see if we can cover that. So look what happens next. They get across to the other side. And when he was come to the other side, into the country of the Genesis, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs exceeding fears so that no man might pass that way. They get to the other side, and that's where they're going. And he just gave us an example of he's, he's, con he's in control. And this, comes out of, this guy comes out of the tombs, and it says, now here's an amazing thing, folks. In Mark, it says it's one, one person. And here we're told there's two. And some people will say, see, the Bible contradicts itself. You can't believe it. I says, don't go there. Because you're talking God wrote the Bible. And he knows exactly what he wrote. And so he could have easily fixed that. Translators could have just changed two to one. No, there's a reason. I believe the two means the man and the, man, the person that's inside him. The devil is, is in control over this man. And so two possess with devils coming out of the tombs. And remember, he lives, his business is death. The devil, that's his business. He wants to scare you. So he li that's where he lives. And that's where that man lived. He lived in the tombs. And now I put that map up there to show you. Um, the River Jordan flows through the middle. On one side, you're going to have... Uh, Manasseh and Gad, those tribes way back in the Old Testament, when we go back, we're going to see that. <clears throat> those people, God told them when they go into the land, they, they were supposed to all go over to the other side of Jordan. They didn't. Manasseh, Reuben, and Gad, they said, Moses, the, the land is really good here. It's good for pastors, for pastors. So, so why don't we stay here? Um, for our cattle, and we'll go with you. We'll help, help you conquer the land. Moses says, okay. He allowed them to stay. But in so doing, they, we come back later, and they, the reason is, Brother Bass pre preached on that. Gad, that was the excuse. That all of them excuse, gave, says, this is good land for grazing. Let's stay over here. But now they're going to be, instead of raising cattle, they're raising what? Pigs. Pigs. And the pig is an unclean thing. They were told that you're not supposed to eat that. Um, which reminds me, when I was in, in 2016, when I was there, I told the guys, there was four of us, I said, I'll be in charge of making the breakfast tacos, right? I said, oh, good, thanks, Phil. So I went to the store, and I was looking for potatoes and eggs, and, uh, and I wanted to get some bacon and, and ham. And I almost asked the people there, I said, hey, where do you keep the bacon? What is it? <laughs> And I asked uh, David, I said, David, you know, I don't have a fine. He says, Phil, you're in Israel. Oh, good grief. Oh, man. I almost <laughs> asked. Oh, good night. You don't. They're not supposed, they don't eat ham and stuff like that. Um, so we find out they were doing things they shouldn't have been doing. And that's why this. Okay. 
So he's at that little point right there. They just crossed over the Sea of Galilee and they come and so they're meeting up with this man, exceeding fears, dangers, and that's the, the devil for us. We're never told to take him on. You know, we're never told to take him on because we can't. And look what it says, and behold, they cried out saying, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God, or thou come hither to torment us before the time? And we're told, I, I see, I have this side where I go get this, all these images. These images are perfect. I mean, I love these images and they're for free. Uh, mm -hmm. These people, I, I, the art I do, I offer them to, to them as well. I says, look, I feed off of your images, so can, I'll give you some of mine. I mean, no cost, that whatever, free. And so, but they're good images. And so here you, saw, you see this man in shackles, because he keeps us, that's how he, he keeps us in bondage. And look what he says, uh, holds people in bondage and torment us before the time. That's what the devil say, because the, the, we know how the Bible ends, and the devil, that's, that's, that's what he awaits. He, he's he's going to be tormented forever. That's, and he says, oh, you come here to do it before the time? And uh, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been, this is, I'm reading from Mark, often bound with fetters and chains and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. This guy was very powerful. He could break chains. I mean, look how many times in Mark he tells us he, he could break chains like nothing. That he couldn't be tamed. Who is this guy? All he tells us. We're told in another place this. Look at this. Look at this. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except if he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. So a stronger man than the strong man was here. That's what the Lord is telling us. Guess what? I'm stronger than the devil. I come over to spoil. So he's spoiling the devil's territory. The world, is he's running it right now, but we Christians have been plucked out, out of the devil's hands. He's constantly doing that um, because he can do that. He's stronger. And so uh, stronger is he that is in you, that he that is in the world. And there was a good way off from them a herd of swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he says, because there were many inside the man, many devils, many demons. And so they're asking, let us go. They got to go into a body. So said, we will go into the pigs. And often, you know, if you go into Google, uh, um, uh, uh, those uh, wild hogs in Texas, you know how? Feral. Exactly. I would never go hunting with I mean, those things are very aggressive. If you go to Canyon Park, uh, uh, Grand, uh, here in San Antonio and Bear County, you can see the damage that they do to the land. I mean, they're like tractors. They plow up fields and they run around in herds. And my dad used to tell me about them. He said, be very careful, very aggressive. They're fearless. To me, the devils came into them and they threatened them with death. And they says, bring it on. They jumped into the sea and died. 2,000 of them. I don't know, that's just me, folks. But <laughs> they were fearless. That's what I'm saying. So look at this. And he said unto them, go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. And they that kept them fled and went into their ways in the city and, and told everything that was befallen to the man possessed of the devils. To, to the, befallen to the possessed of the devils. So what happened to him? He's got peace. He's at peace. And Jesus, he's saying not only does he have grace, he's, he's got peace. That's what you get. And we're going to see the rest of the miracles. We're running out of time the restoration as well but he gets peace and notice what happens here folks 
And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coast. Isn't that crazy? If you want peace in your life, I mean, Jesus is it. He's it. That's, you don't want anything else. That's what you want. And yet people would say, get out of here. I don't want that. And so they told him, get out of here. And they ran him out of their coast. And of course, look at this. He left. And he entered into the ship, passed over, and came into his own city. And he went back to Capernaum, to his own city. But that's a sad story, because these people rejected the Lord, the Prince of Peace. And so how many people are doing that in our time? They're rejecting the Prince of Peace. And so they're rejecting peace in their lives. He is peace. And so we're going to, let's just cover just a little bit more to show you, and then we'll stop here. And behold, they brought unto him a man sick of the palsy, lying in a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven him, be forgiven thee. So he comes back into, and the Lord is so amazing. In this story, what you see, how the Lord works with you. Even if you bring a little bit of faith of a mustard seed, just a little bit of faith, the Lord will work with that. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. 11, 6, Hebrews 11, 6 says, whatever faith you have, God will work with you there. Because he comes back and look, they're carrying this man. Why couldn't they just do what the centurion did? There's this man, that, he's paralyzed, Lord. He needs your help. No, they bring him. They bring him and look what it says. Jesus see in their faith. It was little, but it was something. They brought him, and they tore up the, the, the roof to bring him down to Jesus. Can you imagine that being in your home, and some guys are tearing your roof up? What? What are you guys doing? We need to bring him down so he can be touched. You didn't have to do that. Leave him outside. Just come and tell the Lord. He'll do it through the wall. <coughs> no, they didn't want that. Um, and look what it says, Die faith. and look what Jesus does. Instead of touching him, I mean, healing him right there, he touched him, but I mean, in this picture. But the thing is, he says, thy sins be forgiven thee, which is the important part. That's the important part. And, and behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemous. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? They didn't say it out loud. They just thought it. He says, he's blaspheming. We're going to stop it there. <coughs> it's just exciting, folks. we got more miracles to cover. We don't have the time. We'll stop there. Let's pray. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, maker of all things that are seen and unseen, thank you, Lord, for your wondrous word and the things you teach us out of, us, out of it. In your name, Jesus Christ, we pray and we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Amen. Amen.